Is it a good or bad idea to work in a family-owned business? Let's pick this scenario apart. My name is Nina, and I'm about to get in your business. If you would like to know more about business operations, please consider subscribing to the channel and smash that notification bell so you will be alerted when new videos are uploaded. This video was requested by Peggy Wilson, president of the Houston Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. Employment at a family business is not a decision to be entered into lightly. There are a few scenarios that come to mind. You and a group of your family members decide to financially invest in a company, appointing each other to different C-level management positions. Some companies are owned by a parent and all the children work as lower level employees. Spouses often work together, starting and building profitable businesses many times from nothing. But is it a good idea to work at a company owned or controlled by family members? I found a ton of information both for and against. Let's talk about the pros. You can't be caught off guard because of an unknown character flaw. You know what personality and behavioral type you're getting with each family member. Family members are more likely to make great sacrifices for the success of the company, like ensuring deadlines are met by working late for weeks at a time, taking temporary pay cuts, etc. Maximum support is given to the company since the company is how the family financially survives. Strong bonds equate to sticking together during hard times. If your underage children work for your company, there are tax advantages. Talk to your tax advisor for more information. The work environment could be more relaxed as long as there are no family conflicts. You don't have to take time to meet and greet other people and figure out what their likes and dislikes are. And here are the cons. The work-life scenario can become too comfortable. Some family members may perform marginally since they know it's a good chance they won't be terminated. Conflicts at work or at home may carry over. Some families break up because of these conflicts that can play themselves out in court, permanently damaging relationships. Then you have the rule breakers. Family members may break employment policies and think it's okay. Whether they understand they are breaking the rules or not, they may consider themselves special with special privileges. Fresh ideas may be harder to come by if family members hold decision-making positions. In addition, Resistance to change can impede creativity. Family-owned businesses are less likely to innovate unless outside help is brought in. Talented job seekers may avoid family-owned businesses knowing that any promotions will go to a member of the family. Too many bosses. Too many opinions. Too many people in charge doesn't leave any employees to actually perform the work. What if two different managers gave two different incredibly opposite instructions to a non-family member? It would be a tough conversation for one family member to make a decision that negatively impacts another family member, especially if a termination is warranted.
It's hard to separate work from home, especially if spouses work together. If there is a serious family conflict, a court could possibly break up the business. Disagreements are rampant, even among experts, on whether it's wise for family members to start and operate a business together. One expert cited a number of studies that show family-controlled companies create more wealth and outperform public corporations on many metrics, including total returns and cash flow. Another expert says that family-controlled corporations seriously lack meritocracy, since the choice of C-level managers and key positions are limited to family members, and because of this, many of these family-controlled companies trend downward over time in terms of growth and innovation. Nike, Foxconn, Volkswagen, Samsung, Ford, Mars, and Walmart are all family-owned businesses. With that being said, 70% of family-owned businesses fail or get acquired before the second generation takes over. In addition, fewer than 10% survive to the third generation and less than 10% of owners are financially independent from their companies when they retire. Family-owned and managed companies are a delicate balance between risks and rewards. Thanks for watching.